Welcome to an update for the Federal Muck Marketing Order 33. Uh, this is Dr. Lawrence Jones, and I'm recording this on May 28th, uh, just right after Memorial Day here. All right, so we've been on a tremendous roller coaster on milk prices for the last uh, about eight, nine weeks here. And kind of what's been happening is the spot market has gone up significantly and then just made this significant turn and came down now, and we're headed uh, back down. If we go back and look at some of these rallies, they generally last about six weeks. And uh, we're going to be right on that six, seven week mark uh, for this particular rally. And part of what caused this to go down, we've heard all the information about bird flu. I mean, you guys have a significant amount of it in Michigan. But when the milk production report came out, there was absolutely no evidence of an impact of bird flu on overall milk supply. And in fact, the milk supply on a month over month basis was up about a half a percent, when normally it's up just about uh, that much. I'd set down a marker that said anything over 99.5% would uh, not be a black swan. And in fact, this came in even higher than that. So this rally started on March 19th, just about the time that bird flu was diagnosed. And I've got this slide in uh, to show you a couple of different things. The red is barrels on the spot market. The blue is blocks. The point here is that barrels have led this rally. And... You might remember that there are some changes to the federal milk marketing order to take barrels out of the pricing. I always kind of shake my head when uh, things are being changed, and yet they're providing a significant uh, positive impact on the market. So barrels have clearly led this rally. Last month, I told you that uh, May would likely finish up here around 1750. Here we are a dollar higher than that. And so the question is, you know, why are we a dollar higher than where I had uh, figured it? And, and it's, uh, if it's not bird flu, what else is it? While we're talking about May, let's see where we think it's going to close. I've got it around 1837. The trade was at 1858. Uh, we've got two more weeks because May is a five-week month. Both of us have uh, class four right in that $20.40 range. We should see butter fat around $3.47, protein around $1.67, and other solids just over $0.20 cents around $21. Also, when if we look back, if we could have booked this in at $18.50, we would have been feeling really good here in February and March. Now we may not be feeling so good, but in fact, we'd only be down about $0.08 cents from where uh, we locked it in six months earlier. Overall, I'm uh, projecting the May milk checks to be about a dollar sixty higher than April at this point. So part of what happened is the March exports were really good, and uh, you heard a lot of information about them. We just really exported a tremendous amount of cheese. So we went from six point five percent normal up to eight point nine. Again, that's like a twenty percent increase. But when we actually do the math, it's twenty eight million pounds. We produce somewhere around, let's call it 1.2 billion pounds a month. So 28 million is not very much. I've gone back and built these graphs, uh, which is the cheese price. The green is the global dairy trade. Red is the spot market. Blue is a national dairy sales report. What I was interested in is when should we be exporting cheese? So I've put these black dots anytime there's a 30 cent difference between National Dairy Sales Report and the global dairy trade. That doesn't mean we export cheese, it just says we have the potential to. And there's definitely a potential to be exporting, you know, February, March, uh, kind of time frame here. Again, we were $1.55 on the National Dairy Sales Report and we were $1.88 on global dairy trade. So that gave us 33 cents to play with to get that offshore. And we saw that in the ratio of different cheeses that were made in March because Italian cheese is always the highest. It's been declining over time, but it is the highest. And this ticked up. And when this ticked up, what that happened is uh, some large producers uh, stopped making barrels. They started making mozzarella for export, and that made a shortage of fresh cheese. That doesn't mean cheese as a whole was short, just that fresh cheese was short. 
the Italian type cheeses increased uh, while the others decreased in March. We'll have the April data here uh, next week sometime. So if we look at the last global dairy trade, it was on the 21st, it was up a little bit. Cheddar was flat. And in fact, if you look at butter, you know, we're 308, we're 312 on the spot market. We're not gonna be exporting butter. We've now shut down the exports of cheddar because we're $1.87, where the world market's $1.92, that's too tight. Non-fat dry milk usually takes 10 cents at a minimum, so we might be exporting a little bit of that. We got the cold storage report uh, on Friday, and uh, it turned out that the cheese stocks are pretty well flat. Uh, we've been seeing that, but now we got one, two, three, four, five years with cheese stocks being, you know, basically flat. However, when that came out on Friday, we didn't know how the market would respond. And this morning, the market uh, clearly did not like that report because we were down 25 to 30 cents all the way from June through at least August to September. So the uh, trade did not like what they saw in that uh, cold storage report that there was probably a lot of cheese around. Again, we don't have the disappearance numbers uh, for April yet, but uh, we got the March ones and the disappearance has been relatively flat. And in fact, we can estimate it about 38.8 million pounds a day, but in March we made 39.5. So more cheese is being made than is disappearing. If we kind of use some math and calculate how many cows do we actually need, uh, I've got about 9.37, we're about 9.34 right now. So we're within the margin of error of USDA uh, for cow numbers. When we got the federal milk marketing data um, two weeks ago, it was a bit surprising that Texas was up four and a half percent because we would have said, well, bird flu is impacting uh, Texas. But in fact, uh, we don't think that was that at all. This area down here of Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Kansas is just really short on feed. And so we've had milk moving out of the Midwest into that area because this is plant level data. This is not farm level data. Then that added a narrative that uh, we're short on milk. And so, for example, in the Northeast, uh, we kept hearing people say, but we're short on milk. The balancing plants don't have uh, enough milk. But in fact, what was happening is that milk was flowing to uh, that Texas, New Mexico area or into Florida, which was also up 4%. Let's look at some of the data for order 33. Your statistical uniform price was 1827. That's down 37 cents uh, from last month. But again, that 1827 would be historically good prices except for this run up uh, here. Order 33 was also depooling class four significantly. You had very little class four in the pool. And why wouldn't you depool it? Because uh, class four was almost four and a half dollars higher than class three. But what that means is you're gonna have a lower milk check, but if you get a depooling uh, check from your handler, that actually should make up that difference. But depooling is always gonna lower your milk check because it takes the higher of the class out of the pool. And it looks like class four is gonna be higher than class three for the next year. This is a Friday's data. Couple things uh, can be pointed out on this graph. One is this difference is going to suggest that class four will continue to be depooled, and number two, PPDs are going to be very positive. So as long as we have this significant difference, the overall milk price is going to be higher than the class three, which is uh, how PPD is calculated. Once again, your fat tests were up quite a bit. Uh, you were 417 last year. We were 407, just a continued rise in uh, fat percentages. Protein was about the same. We normally come down a little bit this time of the year, but you're 324 a year ago, you're 322. Without protein having a high value on it, there's not a, a big reason to be feeding for protein at this point. Then the slaughter data just uh, continues to confuse us. Uh, for the week ending May 11th, we slaughtered 8,000 fewer cows than we did a year ago. So here we are on uh, 2024, here's where we were in 23, and here's where we were in 22. And if we just compare the last 12 months to the previous 12 months, we actually slaughtered 185,000 fewer animals. So that would suggest that the herd should be expanding with calling a bit fewer animals. 
but in fact the herd shrunk by about 78,000 animals. Uh, so definitely fits into a narrative that we are short on heifers. To see this even better, we calculate the rolling slaughter rate. So this takes into account the cow numbers. When we're over above 32.5%, usually we're in contraction mode. We're calling more than uh, we've got replacements. When we drop below here, we're in expansion mode. But we've been basically in status quo since about November, somewhere in there, uh, 9.34 million cows. Need to take a quick look at butter because this is the one that's been uh, just kind of climbing up here. We're up to 312 on the spot market. World market's 308. We're not going to be exporting any butter. But what's confusing about this is the cream multiples are 1.26. To see extremely high butter prices, typically we see very high cream multiples, meaning that cream is short. And in fact, uh, the cream multiples are, are not supporting these kind of numbers. At the same time, spot milk prices uh, in the upper Midwest were $6 under to about 50 cents under. Now, there were some weather considerations, and you guys probably know more than this, but uh, spot milk prices uh, were not on the positive side. The butter stocks actually came in above what we had expected it to be right on trend line. So the question is, what is driving this price? And I think what's going on is normally we're going to build stocks for about the next three months. and The trade is afraid we're not going to have enough milk uh, to build those stocks like we normally do. And so that's the fear at the moment. If we look at fat prices, they're expected to stay up through you know the end of the year and then fall off on that Basically, what we see most years, uh, last year that did not happen because of a shortage of uh, butter, but we're expecting these to start falling off in November. And if cream becomes fairly available, these are going to fall off uh, even through the end of the year here. The other side of the ledger are the uh, grains, and so here's our channel for corn, which is 155 to 180. We're right in the middle of that now. There's a lots of concern about planting windows in the Midwest. So this might have traction to it. And uh, wheat has set all sorts of new highs here recently. So that's also going to pull corn up. Soybean meal is kind of outside of our 370 channel. But the way I like to look at this for dairies is about 8 pounds of corn meal, 8 pounds of soybean meal. And so we've been as high as 270, 280. And if we look at you know that channel as to where we were, we're significantly lower. So we've pulled almost 50 to 60 cents off a cow a day for a diet that does have that eight pounds of cornmeal, eight pounds of soybean meal in it. Another thing that's going on is we've really uh, beat back the drought. Uh, Michigan is almost uh, in no drought. California is the big one. Those reservoirs are all full. There's still a little bit in the Southern Plains and the Western Corn Belt to here, but this is not going to be a deterrent to milk production in California at this point. So the concern in the grain markets right now is these uh, planting windows, particularly in the western part of the Corn Belt. Now, we should be 80, 82 percent uh, planted at this point, you know, but these are very tight uh, windows. And a lot of the corn has actually been put in in subpar conditions. So being a trend line yield this year is probably off the... Uh, radar. All right, that's kind of a summary of where I, I think we are, and uh, I appreciate Nobis AgriScience for supporting this podcast, and I'll get you another report uh, next month.